Hi, my name is Chris Salem, your host of Business Influencers. We want to welcome you if this is your first time here at Business Influencers. Again, you can find us here at the Tal Radio uh, website, again, part of the Touch of Life Foundation. And again, we encourage you to check us out each and every week here as we bring in subject matter experts sharing their words of wisdom and insights to help elevate your level of business influence to the next level. Now, if there's anything that you would like to hear that has not been covered on the show, feel free to reach out to us at chris at christophersalem.com. And we'd be happy to take that information and see where down the road we could align that content for a future show with the right subject matter expert that can provide you the insights that you're looking for. We are here for you and we're committed each and every week to delivering quality content that will help move your level of influence and business to the next level. Today's show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. Alumni Direct is a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing alumni together from all different generational types, an opportunity to either rekindle old relationships or meet new people for the first time. This is a membership program, meaning it takes all the noise out of social media. So this way that you're able to come in to generate genuine and authentic relationships with the people you choose to do so without any of those noisy notifications and where you can share content that resonates with you. Again, this is an opportunity where you can form groups, not only from where you went to school, but from fraternities, sororities, or just about any group. It also offers an athlete's corner for those professional athletes that are transitioning from their sport into everyday life. You don't have to feel alone anymore. Now you can connect with other fellow professional athletes doing the same, allowing you to make that transition a lot smoother and seamless as you get go into everyday life working either for someone or in your own business. So again, if you'd like some more information about the benefits of being a member of Alumni Direct, check them out at alumnidirect.com. That's alumnidirect.com. Well, we got a wonderful show planned for you today. I'm looking forward to uh, this topic about don't be fragile. Now, before you just jump to conclusions or perceive what that means, again, you're going to get a different look. It's going to be, of course, around resilience. And, you know, as the one of the main areas of this uh, discussion today and how this applies to not only at the individual level, but also with teams in workplaces and so on. And we're going to be here today with Dr. Davis McAllister. He is a dynamic keynote speaker, business coach dedicated to transforming leaders into resilient problem solvers who build high, uh, build high performing teams, leveraging his extensive military background and successful entrepreneur experience. Dr. McAllister brings a unique perspective to leadership development. His principles honed through coaching award-winning sports teams have proven effective across various domains. With eight years of distinguished service in the US Army as an interrogator, counterintelligence specialist and linguist, Dr. McAllister received specialized training from the FBI and MOSAD. Notably, notably, he graduated as a distinguished honor graduate from the U.S. Army Leadership and Development course, ranking first among 226 soldiers. His academic credentials include a master's degree in educational leadership, further solidifying his expertise in guiding others to success. As the CEO of three thriving LLCs, a dedicated powerlifting coach, and a devoted husband and father of five, Dr. McAllister exemplifies balance and achievement, his impressive academic accomplishments include a doctorate, two master degrees, two bachelor degrees, and a certification as a strength and conditioning coach. Dr. McAllister's influence extends nationally and internationally through his live speaking engagements and diverse topics such as education, health, sports performance, sales, success principles, and leadership development. He has captivated audience at leadership workshops, power lunches, webinars, coaching conferences and online summits and has made numerous guest appearances on podcasts, radio shows, and television programs. And without further ado, we welcome Dr. Davis McAllister. David, Davis, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me on, Chris. Absolutely. We are such a pleasure. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, we are, you know, we're living in, in a society today that is just, you know, more complex than ever. And, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, you get sometimes the, you know, you know, this world that we got to be careful what we say, we got to be careful what we do. And, and all that stuff's good. Because again, it's all about inclusion. It's all about respecting people coming from empathy and kindness. But we also got to recognize that we got to do our part, you know, that, you know, life isn't easy. Life is going to have its, you know, uh, our ups and downs, and we are going to get knocked around if we allow it. 
Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, 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 you have a concept about don't be fragile. Let's talk a little bit about the, 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 you know, a little bit of more information around that and what that really means when we talk about resilience. So this is something that I've observed over the years and, and kind of, you know, seeing how people react when they encounter adversity. And I got this mindset about that started when I was in the military, my very first squad leader. Uh, and I've heard, I've said this in several different conferences and interviews, but it just, it's something that just resonated with me. My first squad leader pulled me to the side. I, I asked him, I said, why, why don't you yell at us? Like all the, cause everybody associates the military by just standing around yelling at each yelling, other. Yelling, yelling. And yeah, like it's yeah. very direct. Yeah. Bureaucratic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he didn't address us that way. He always stayed just very even keel. Um, it, it didn't matter a whole lot what was going on. And, and it, there was only very, very few instances. I could probably count on less than one hand how many times he actually just elevated his voice at all. And one day I asked him why, why, why did he approach things that way? And he said, I'm going to share with you the same thing my first squad leader shared with me. And he said, if all I ever do is yell at you, when I have something really important to say, you're not going to hear me because it sounds like everything else I say. Yeah. And, sure. Yeah. And, and so it really, uh, you know, came hand in hand with that whole mental approach of how you encounter issues and counter problems and, and the whole mindset. But plus the job that I had, you couldn't let yourself get rattled either. So, you know, if you're sitting across from somebody and, and uh, you know, trying to get information out of them, you can't, you can't turn around and be emotional about that either. So, um, but and and even the influences that I had growing up, you know, you had all these different, you know, I, I grew up in the seventies and eighties, and and so you know, I had people like Ronald Reagan, and it didn't matter what was going on, he was still the same person, no matter no matter what scenario he was in, and had a sense of humor about it because even after he had been shot, you know, this film of him sitting up there doing an interview, and somebody popped a balloon, and he just paused right in the middle of his speech and said, "Miss me," and then just kept going. Yeah, like you a know, sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but it was just that same even keel. Um, and it didn't matter what that what the adversity was. And then I started observing people as I got into different industries, sort of working in different environments, uh, you know, coaching environment. You know, obviously, you know, coaches tend to yell a lot. And um and, and I saw how they reacted to adversity when things got difficult. Um, you know, you see how you know, even on TV, you can see how some coaches will react in the middle of a game if the game's not going well. I mean, and they just start twisting off. And and the thing is, though, is that when you're in business, that doesn't work. No. Um, I can't. You, I can't imagine somebody just going off on some on an employee because things are just not going well. But I've heard it happen, and 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 I've seen it happen. And so. What that displays to me, though, is a lack of resilience and a lack of emotional intelligence to be able to understand how that adversity is is affecting them and causing them to act outwardly. Yeah, that's so true. And like you said, I mean, <clears throat> you know, it's like when people yell and scream, you know, it, whether if it's in sports or if it's, you know, in, you know, with, you know, a, a business of any size, it's like because we're reacting from that negative emotion. We're not we're not pausing to say, okay, okay, I know this is unpleasant. I'm, I don't like this, but but nonetheless, I can't change it. I can only change what how I respond to it. I can't change it itself. It is what it is. I, it's not what I what I think it should be. But it, when yeah. we when you can change your view of that, then you can now respond from a favorable emotion, a positive emotion, even though you're still angry, but mm -hmm. knowing that you could address that. So I like what you said like that, and the, and the, and what you said about your, your sergeant that you report that you were, that you respected him. Like you, you actually listened when he had something important versus if he were yelling, it would just sound like everything else that he was yelling about and screaming and you yeah. wouldn't hear it. And that could have yeah. been a matter of life or death. If that were the case, especially in the army and God yeah. forbid, if you didn't hear him, it could have been, you know, it could have cost somebody their life. Yeah. I mean, cause there's that, that there's an actual innate, you know, thing that, when, when somebody is just constantly yelling all the time, you just get to the point where you just, you just learn to tune them out. Tune it out. And, yeah. yeah. And then when they do say something important, you don't hear it because you, all you've done is been able to condition yourself to tune them out and not hear what they say. So yeah. And, and that overlaps on, 
on all kinds of industries and across businesses. My wife worked for a doctor that, you know, every day they came in, there were sticky notes on people's computers to say, who do I have to fire today because this didn't happen or that didn't happen. And it, it was constantly a threatening environment, um, you know, just, you know, toxic at best. And, and so that really prompted me to start analyzing and, and, and really looking at how people in business respond to those adversities. And then what can we do to change that? What can we do to get them to be more conscious of it, have a little bit more intuition about what's going on? And, you know, really the first step is how they view adversity. If they, if they constantly view adversity as something negative and as something that's detrimental, you know, that that's always going to be the reaction they have. Yeah. You have to learn to embrace challenges and understand and nothing ever goes exactly to plan. No. You know, it's like Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan clear until they get hit in the face the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, and so and there's a process to everything. You know, there's a process to growth. There's a process to, you know, building a business or, or even coming through a period where you've had growth and then how do you sustain that growth? And there's a process that you have to go through for that. So it, it's about how you look at it is the, is where the starting point is. And you have to change your perspective of what adversity is. No, it makes sense. Total sense. And what I, what I love what you said is that, you know, you got to see adversity and see challenges for what it is. It, it, without them, we can't, we can't grow. We can't expand. We can't appreciate or have gratitude for when we when we you know come out on the other side in a in a good way, and sometimes we have to lose in order. In this case, not that we lose, we learn. You're not really losing unless you decide that's what it means to you. That you're mm-hmm. learning to now know what you can do differently to to win, and without challenges and setbacks, that that that's not possible. You know, and and that resiliency is what keeps us, like you said driven it 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 allows us to dig in for that discipline from within and be consistent with the things that are going to move us forward yeah absolutely and and that's just from an individual standpoint now you put that person in a in a position of authority and that's and they if they don't know how to react how are the people below them going to be able to follow and do what they need to do because then everything becomes reactionary instead of proactionary mm. as far as re- you know, approach to the problem and dealing with whatever the adversity or issue is and it doesn't matter if it's you know some people allow their personal to overlap into their business and vice versa some people take work home with them and it allows it to affect their family instead of learning how to compartmentalize granted i'm speaking more from the business side of things and, and compartmentalizing it from that standpoint but those things can overlap uh, there are people that bring their family issues to work and and allow it to affect how they interact with the people that they're supposed to be in charge of. Yeah. So then it starts affecting their communication. And then the the third aspect that I've noticed is that for some people, it will it will affect their intent. You know, a lot of people will have oh, really yeah. good intent when everything is going well. But the minute that you know adversity starts coming in, sometimes that intent reverts to self-preservation rather than doing what's best for the organization and the team as a whole and and keeping that focus. Absolutely. I love what you shared there. And what would you recommend Dr. Davis, like when you, when you think about what we're talking about here and like, again, seeing challenges as opportunities, not something happening to you, but happening for you, the concept of resilience, like it doesn't have to be situational. It's something that we should, you know, tap it into each and every day as we as we strive to accomplish things that are important us in, in our jobs and in our with our teams with our personal lives our relationships our well being whatever that may be, what would you recommend that people if people are listening and now just getting a, a, an idea of what you've shared what would be that first step what's something they can do first to start making that that change so to speak. I would say the first thing that they need to understand is what what is resiliency, because that's one of those terms. And I've stood in front of people and I've asked people to write down a, a definition. I was, I was in front of a company that they asked me to come in and we talked a little bit about resiliency. They've had some struggles financially. And then, you know, we got into a little bit of goal setting and those types of things. And the when I asked them to write down what the definition of resiliency was, nobody could write anything down. Some people just you know, had like maybe one or two word, but nobody really put down a definition. 
And what it is, is the capacity to adapt to adversity. And it's that word capacity there, which means that it's not just one solid element. It means it's an element that can continue to grow. You know, John Maxwell talked about it in the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He talked about the law of capacity, you know, the law of the lid. And your capacity will only expand as far as you will allow it to grow. Mm. And so it, it's that constant reinforcement. And again, it comes back to that mental mental aspect of it. And it's that reinforcement. So the first thing that I would tell people that they need to start doing in the morning is, is what they listen to. Um, that that's going to affect your mindset. That's going to affect your energy for the day. What are you putting in your head? And if it's one of those things that you're trying to grow your, grow your real resiliency, you need to grow your concept of embracing those challenges and tackling those challenges with a positive mindset. So you need to start listening to those things on a daily basis. There's tons of material that you can find. There's podcasts, there's YouTube videos, you know, with positive mindset to start the day off like that. And I've had some days where as soon as, you know, I listen to one of those, I step in the door and then got hit in the face with something right when I walked in the door. But it's still, you know, recognizing it for what it is and being able to take that challenge and constantly reinforcing that and constantly reminding yourself of that. Yeah, no, it's great, great information what you shared and so important. What would be like, a, like, again, you know, you, you said it starts with, you know, the awareness you know, defining what resilience, you know, kind of means to you. And again, you talked about the thing about, you know, again, you know, seeing adversity, at, you know, how it, you know, how it's a good thing, uh, the capacity thing and so on. What would be some other things that you could share where we can now utilize this frame of thinking in it, you know, how we can, that resilient mindset and how it can really turn around something that's really important, whether it's on a team level uh, a business level uh, it, that could include with a business too, with the team. And then even on an individual level, how that resiliency plays out over time. If we, but if we can learn to do it and, you know, develop it in, over in chunks of time that, you know, it's not going to flip a switch and it's going to happen immediately. We have to yeah. work our way through it just because we've been programmed to think from fear and react from mm -hmm. fear rather than respond to these situations and people not react from it. Yeah. So the the other things that you can start to do with that is that you need to be aware of how, you know, this is still part of the awareness part, but you need to be aware of how it has affected you. And it may require you to have some conversations and be able to hear some things you may not necessarily want to hear because when it overlaps into your communication, whether it's verbal, nonverbal type communication, now you've got to be able to start addressing how you talk how you speak to people, how do you frame things? What you say is just as empower is just as powerful as what you think. And so you've got to start implementing that language that is more positive, that's going to be able to motivate and start applying that to bring teams together and take more of a problem solving approach where you take the emotion out of it. So now you can start taking problems and you start breaking them down and, and increment, increments and be able to actually apply them as part of a goal setting with your team involved and allow them to be more creative and innovative as far as the way they approach it. So that's a that's a really good practical application to to be able to start with. Yeah, I think that's great. And what are some of the things like when when you when you can now you know, you know, learn how to take, you know, be resilient, you know, step by step. Cause again, you know, you, you try to do everything at once you're setting yourself up for failure, yeah. but if there's that, if you embrace that process of resiliency, do you see that it has an impact uh, in how we communicate to ourselves internally in a good way, rather like our inner champion, rather than our inner critic and how we communicate more effectively to others, just like how your, your Sergeant communicated in a very assertive, not in a passive aggressive way with you and, and your, um, your peers and, and then how it just, how it impacts your decision-making ability and your risk-taking ability and ability to take action. It, it really clears your mind up uh, by changing that mindset and that approach. And you have to understand, uh, like you said, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you're going to have those periods of weakness and you've got to have something that's going to be able to snap you out of those periods of weakness where you're going to try. It's a, it's just like exercise. If you stop exercising, 
you know, what's going to happen? You're going to revert back to the weaker, flabbier version of yourself rather than continuing to build and continue to get stronger. You know, and, and it's just like, you know, going into the weight room, you can't get stronger if you don't increase the resistance. And so from that point, if you want to grow your capacity, you have to start looking for more challenges and looking for more uh, opportunities to take on adversity to be able to continue to grow. Then yeah. as regarding the communication aspect, you need to understand how it is that uh, you're communicating to start with and then how it causes you to change. So. Uh, you know, some people, you know, you know, we were talked about the yelling, but sometimes it's that uh, passive aggressive type language that, that starts to come out in people when they when they start having that adversity uh, and resilience and, and reframing, start learning how to reframe and and learning the vocabulary that goes with that more positive motivational mindset. So there is a learning process. There is a learning curve that goes with that. And then you can still be assertive. You can still have a confident attitude uh, when it comes to your team. But there's a fine line between being confident and assertive and trying to intimidate. And yeah. so you've got to know where your line is on that, where you can cross. Because, you know, when I'm walking down the street, I'm not the most approachable looking guy. You know, once you get to know me, I'm, I'm you know, I'm an awesome guy. But. You know, just seeing me come down the street, some people have a different presence about them and you need to know how that affects people. I, I like that because, again, you know, a lot of times people, you know, why they react is they they go in, they, 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 they immediately judge or they immediately, again, see something from their perspective, not what mm -hmm. to what actually is. And again, mm -hmm. they just come in with from assumptions and speculation and not with actual what's really happening, so to speak. Yeah. What's real? What's really and again, resiliency, I, I've learned like how you said it, I, you know, how I've been, I, how I can throttle back and begin to look at, you know, situations and other people. I can't control that. And I can't just assume how I see it from my experience. I have to see it for what it is. And then, you know, whatever has to be worked on can be worked on for those areas that have to be addressed, not the person itself. So no, great information you're sharing. Any other insights as we get near the end of the show here, like that you want to share that really can drive home you know, the, the concept of don't be fragile and how resiliency can really, really, you know, pay dividends and also really rub off on other people, most importantly, your family and your loved ones and people who work with you or work for you to do the same. I would say probably the most important thing is you have to understand that once you have been put in a position of authority or leadership to be able to guide and, and develop others, you can't get away from the fact that people are watching you. You're now in the spotlight. You're now under the microscope to a certain degree. And people are getting their guidance and their cue of how to react to things based off of watching you and what you do. So you have to be mindful of that. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and, and your intent, you know, we talked a little bit about intent and how that affects things. You know, when you when you start encountering adversity, does your intent change or can you stay focused on the task at hand and say, okay, this is where our goals, we have these challenges, we have these obstacles, we've got to work through these, we've got to work around these, this is just part of it and not allow that to, to knock you back into that self-preservation mode where, you know, it's all about me and forget everybody else at this point. You've, you've got to, you know, be able to continue to guide others through that process and and guide them to the victory that's on the other side even as far as your family is concerned your kids are watching you to know how to react and how to handle situations as they grow older and become adults if you're if you're in a position of leadership and you're trying to develop other people which you should be doing you should be trying to develop future leaders uh, that came up that come up under you they're watching you to see how to handle and, and deal with situations and that can be good or bad and so you have to be mindful of that and pay attention to that. There's there's a price to pay for, you know, being put in a position of authority, whether we like it or not. And, you know, that that's our level of influence. And you have to understand the power and magnitude of your influence of, of what that's going, what the ripple effect is going to be from that. And so yeah. I think if you keep that at the forefront of your mind and, and you know, live with a, a purpose type mentality that, 
you know, if you're if your goal and your whole purpose is to grow and develop others and and to help others around you, want to follow you and also want to emulate what you present, you know, you present, you have to get a good idea of what that picture is and then follow and stay with that picture. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is some great information uh, here that you are sharing um, here, Dr. Davis. Incredible information. And I know we could spend another easy half an hour talking on this. And I know uh, with our show only being a half an hour, we only have so much to do. But definitely, we will continue this conversation on a future show. And we hope everyone listening is getting, you know, wrote down, go back, listen to the show in its entirety. Great information here, because this is going to help you in helping raising your level of influence and, and seeing that when you're going through a, you know, a difficult time uh, in your business or, you know, building your level of influence, that's all part of the process. And as Dr. Davis shared. So Dr. Davis, if you, you know, if you could share with us a little bit of insight about, you know, how can people get in touch with you? What are you up to and anything you'd like to provide them? Absolutely. I've got a website out there for uh, the different things that I do because I, I do provide uh, consulting and coaching and for businesses and for business owners, uh, as well as people that are in authority. I'm also interested in going out and doing some speaking engagements. I like to go out to events and come into companies and be able to do talks for them uh, on a couple of different topics that I have. They're all on my website at drdavismcallister.com. Uh, you could also reach me by email at info at drdavismcallister.com. And the, most recently, we've had a, a new sh live stream show that we've put out called The Approach that's uh, live streamed on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and Facebook, which Chris has been in the, the latest episode um, with us, and that, that's actually how we met. So uh, so definitely tune into that and uh, make sure you go and hit like and subscribe for that. Excellent. And we will make sure that, again, that's all in the show notes. Again, we highly encourage you to reach out to Dr. Davis McAllister. Wealth of information. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. Check out the LinkedIn Live. Check out the website and, you know, and, and get acclimated with his information and resources that can help you both on a personal and a business level. Uh, Dr. Davis, we want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us here today. Thank you again for having me on, Chris. Thank you. And listeners, we want to thank you each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers. Again, we are committed to your level of influence and helping to raise your level of influence in business to the next level. We want to make sure, again, that if you would like to see a, any future content not covered yet, reach out to us again at chris at christophersalem.com. And again, again, listen to this show in its entirety here later today. And go ahead and share this with a colleague, a friend, another business part, uh, a colleague. Again, there's always information of value here. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week and take care.